I'm going to administer the oath of office. And after I, you will insert your name and then repeat after me all at once. I. I, J. W. Smith. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of Arkansas. The Constitution of the State of Arkansas. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office as a member. I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office as a member. Of the City of Siloam Springs Planning Commission and Board of Adjustment. Of which I am about to enter. Which I am about to enter. In the manner provided by law. The manner provided by law. Okay, everybody can sign. Now we can sign. I'd like to call the City of Salem Springs Planning Commission meeting for Tuesday, January 14th, 2020, to order. Roll call. Song? Yes. Montgomery? Here. Sally? Here. McKinney? Here. Smith? Here. Driscoll? Here. Colvin? Here. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes for the special call meeting November 18th that we've all previously received. Uh, is there any additions, corrections, deletions, anybody noted? If none, do I have a motion to- So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Uh, voice vote or is it roll call? Voice. And all those in favor for a voice vote, to accept the meetings as or the minutes as listed, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Minutes are approved. Next item will be the election of officers for our uh, current year. The first position that we'll be discussing will be for the chair. And uh, I'd like to open the floor for nominations for chair. I'd like to make a motion for Todd Colvin. Second. And a second. Do we have any other nominations? There being none, do I have a motion to cease nominations? I move cease nominations and elect by acclamation. Got that. Got a second? Second. Okay, with a motion and a second to cease and vote by acclamation. Voice vote for same. That would be a, needs to be a roll call. Okay, roll call, sorry. Mr. Phillips, roll call, please. Montgomery? Yes. 
Valley? Yes. Kenny? Yes. Smith? Yes. Driscoll? Yes. Calvin? Yeah. Kong? <laughs> yes. All right. Motion approved. I uh, hope I don't mess up any of the meetings for you. But um, next position will be for the vice chair. I'd like to open the floor for nominations for vice chair. I'd like to nominate J.W. Smith. Second. Motion and a second. Do I have any other nominations for vice chair? None being heard. Do I have a motion to cease nominations? Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call. Sally? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Smith? Yes. Driscoll? Yes. Alvin? Yes. Song? Yes. Montgomery? Yes. Very good. Congratulations, JW. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, last position will be secretary. I open the floor for nominations for secretary. I'll nominate Driscoll. Second. Motion and a second. Do I have any other nominations? There being none, do I have a motion to cease nominations? So move. So move. Second. Second. Roll call, Mr. Phillips. Okay. Song? Yes. Montgomery? Yes. Sally? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Smith? Yes. Driscoll? Yes. Alvin? Yes. Okay. With that being complete, at this time, I uh, would like to recess the Planning Commission meeting now that we exist and uh, move to the Board of Adjustments. Do I have to have a vote to recess? You do. Okay. Motion and second. And vote. All right. Do I have a motion to recess? So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Are recessed? Oh, need vote. sorry. Sorry. Voice vote would be sufficient. Do I have a voice vote in approval of recessing to the Board of Adjustments meeting? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Very good. Okay. I'd like to call to order the Board of Adjustments for the City of Salem Springs for January 14, 2020. First roll call, please. Montgomery? Here. Sally? Here. McKinney? Here. Smith? Here. Driscoll? Here. Calvin? Here. Song? Here. First item of business will be approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Adjustment meeting October 8, 2019. We've received copies of those minutes. Is there any additions, deletions, or corrections needed? Being none, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, voice vote of aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Being none, the item on our agenda is a variance request for driveway and green space, BOA 1907. Mr. Rhodes will present this. Um, this presentation will also be for the first item on the Planning Commission agenda as far as the PowerPoint things go. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and congratulations, and members of the Commission. Uh, I'm Ben Rhodes. I'm the city's senior planner. <clears throat> uh, before you is a variance permit for a driveway and green space buffer located at 2500 Highway 412 East and also part of 2690 Highway 412, which is the property next door um, to the east. In addition to these variance, uh, variances, um, as the chairman stated, 
um, I will be presenting on the related special use permit. Uh, this will be the first item considered on the Planning Commission's agenda when it reconvenes. Uh, the special use permit is solely occurring at 2500 Highway 412 East and is needed because the uh, proposed use is a drive-through. Uh, as the Commission will recall, a code change to require uh, special use permits for drive-throughs was re recommended for approval at the November 18th special call meeting of the Planning Commission. Uh, this ordinance is now adopted by the Board of Directors as of last Tuesday. Uh, so this is the uh, site plan. Uh, the main of the variance centers around the side drive to Highway 16, which is located right here. Uh, there was an access easement granted in 1983 by the property at 2690 Highway 412, known as a Kenny Auto Service, uh, to the subject property for the proposed building. Uh, the issue is, is the uh, 1983 uh, access easement is only 20 feet wide, uh, and this is not wide enough to accommodate a 25-foot uh, wide driveway, and is also not wide enough to allow for the required uh, six-foot green space buffer along the south property line. Uh, the variance for your considerations are reducing the uh, two-way drive width from 25 feet to 20 feet, and a four-foot encroachment into the green space buffer. Uh, this is not a six-foot encroachment because there was a previous variance approved four years ago to um, allow for a two-foot encroachment into the green space, and that has already been approved uh, as of 2016, so right now you're just looking at the four-foot encroachment for the remainder bit of the green space there. You will also note that the applicant has shifted this axis north um, to clear the green space buffer, uh, and I'll show that right here where I'm circling that the drive does shift up back to the north to uh, allow that green space to come back in. Uh, as I mentioned at the start of my presentation, I also will be touching on the uh, special use permit as this is indirectly related to the variance request. Um, the issue is the uh, drive-through uh, beverage center will be touching an R4 zone lot, and you see that zone right here. Uh, the drive-through will be bi-directional, meaning that uh, one will actually face north while the other one faces south on both sides of the structure located there. Um, there will be no speaker boxes. Uh, orders will be made out at a pickup window. Uh, the primary concern is the headlights of vehicles facing southwards. Um, that may impact apartments to the south, and you'll see that clearer in the next slide here. And so this is the site uh, looking to the south from about a month ago. And so we uh, believe that the apartments uh, here, and also this one as well, um, which is under construction, are the ones most likely to be impacted by the uh, proposed drive-through use. Uh, as seen in the staff report attachment, um, staff is recommending condition that a privacy fence be constructed to uh, block the view of the headlights. Um, this, uh, the code is also requires um, an opaque screen. It's already in the code. However, um, it does not specify that it actually is a privacy fence. Um, so for example, uh, shrubs or something similar to that uh, would would not uh, be or, uh, can be acceptable in some circumstances under the current code requirements. However, um, we believe that a fence was uh, the best method to prevent uh, light intrusion from the uh, neighboring property. Uh, shifting back again to the variance, uh, this is the location of that drive, uh, 20 foot um, existing um, easement. Staff has reviewed the arguments presented by the applicant as well as uh, researching the case, and we do believe that there is evidence to uh, support a hardship, um, the prime driver being the insufficient size of the access easement by, for a modern uh, bi-directional driveway. Furthermore, uh, the secondary issue is the traffic conditions at this location are such that secondary um, driveway is, is really paramount to allow for the secondary ingress and egress to and from the property. Uh, this is why the uh, access easement was actually granted in the first place. So uh, by uh, restricting the drive to just a one-way circulation, it impacts the overall maneuverability 
uh, to and from the site and in turn degrades uh, traffic safety and convenience. Uh, in order to better explain some of the traffic challenges, um, I would like to invite uh, Justin Bland, uh, city engineer, to come up and uh, explain this a little bit more. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Justin Bland, city engineer. Um, so what Ben said was correct, and I, I just wanted to kind of get point out some things that changed um, somewhat recently at this intersection. Um, and they had to do with the, the stoplight there at Progress. Um, you may remember previously when the uh, north-south, I guess you got a green light going north-south, it went turn green in both ways. And um, if you're going north-south, that was kind of bad because you kind of got backed up because there wasn't a dedicated turn lane there. There's not enough space. Um, the city crews have been working with RDOT on that. And what they've uh, done here, I think about three months ago, was they were able to change this to a split phase signal. So, so if you're going south, it turns green just going south, and then it goes red, and then it flips, and then if you're going north, it goes green. So, so it's great now because the traffic doesn't get backed up from left turn, car turning left, going on uh, Highway 412. The downside, though, is that the cycle time on that the side streets has uh, increased, especially in, in peak hours. So what we're seeing is that there's a uh, more of a queue building up on Highway 412 in both directions, uh, particularly you know at 8 o'clock and 5 o'clock. So going back to the safety of this site as a whole, uh, you know, staff thinks having this back um, access is a, is a, you know, huge plus for the safety for any development that goes, that goes here since it is C2, uh, particularly with it being so close to the intersection. There's only maybe uh, stacking space for maybe six to eight cars here, which at five o'clock, that doesn't take very long to fill up. So uh, with that, staff is available for any questions. Or oh, I'm sorry, I can turn back over to Ben. Thank you, Justin. Um, so um, just concluding, um, staff does find grounds for the uh, hardship fair variance, and we are recommending approval of the special use permit with the stated condition um, on the fence. And uh, we are also available for questions initially just on the variance, and then after the Planning Commission reconvenes, uh, we can then answer any questions specifically to the special use permit. And uh, with that, we are available for any questions. So thank you. Is anyone here on behalf of the applicant that would like to speak to the board? <coughs> Please state your name and address. My name is Jason Young with Bates and Associates at 4298 West Bellflower in Fayetteville. Um, staff explained our conditions here and our reason for requesting the variance um, pretty well. I don't have anything to add, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone here from the public that would like to address the board in regards to the variance only at this point in time? Yes, sir. Please, please come to the mic. And state your name and address, please. Kenny Lambert, 2690 Highway 412 East. Thank you. I'm the property owner there on the corner. Um, have a couple little things you probably ought to look at before you decide on this. This. Pass it to our recorded servant as a clerk as opposed to individual members. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll look at your picture up here, where that goes on to the road right there, that was this Friday. Um, not real sure what you're going to put a road out right there. I would like to have some sort of barrier or something to keep them from driving through my land. Um, if you go 20 feet, um, if you don't put a curb or something on there, it gets a real, real sh um, little where two cars, I would have a hard time going in and out. Okay. So, uh, you're concerned about the design between this yeah I would like some I'd like to have some input on the design if you do do the variance okay. um, you know um, but I'm real concerned about people driving off into my lot and then I'm real concerned if it rains where are they gonna go thank you
Ben. This, uh, this concern is better addressed during the actual proposal of the special use or just the variance? Well, if the concerns are primarily centered on the, on the driveway, I would say that's part of the variance request. Um, special use would only be related to the drive through and the impacts thereof. Thank you. Question, Ben. The variance on the drive going from the property out to 16. The variance is on the south side of the of the drive towards the apartments, or is the variance on the north side towards the? Uh, it would be from the south property line that's shared with the apartments going north. So it would be allowed to allow paving. Um, of only a 20-foot driveway rather than 25 right. along the full width of that given access easement from 1983. Okay. So the from from Highway 16 into the property is only going to be 20-foot wide? 20-foot wide is what you're looking at today rather than doing 25-foot, which is what the code requires. Right. So if I understand, we're not make it a variance to make it wider than 20? No. The variance is to allow for a narrower okay. driveway. Got you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? There being none, do I have a motion in regards to this variance request? I move that based on the hardship presented by the applicants, uh, we approve uh, variance for BOA 19-07. We have a motion to approve BOA 19-07. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion and a second. Roll call. Driscoll? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Song? Yes. Montgomery? Yes. Sally? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Smith? Yes. <coughs> Approved. This being the only item on the agenda, do I have a motion to adjourn Board of Adjustment? So moved. Got a motion, do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, sign by voice vote. Yay. Aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Board of Adjustments is adjourned. This time we're calling the Planning Commission meeting back into <coughs> session. First item on the agenda is a special use development permit that Mr. Rhodes already spoke to us about. Um, is there anybody on behalf of the applicant who wishes to speak on the special use? Again, I'm Jason with Bates and Associates, and again, uh, it was explained pretty well by staff what we're looking for, but if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone present from the public that wishes to speak in regards to the special use permit? Anyone from the commission have any questions? I have one. It's an easy one, Ben. Okay. The privacy fence that is to uh, shield the lights from the apartments. Mm -hmm. How tall is that going to be? It normally would be six foot. Yep. And is it is it going to be a shadow box or is it going to be a solid fence? Um, we haven't discussed the, the actual style of the fence. Uh, we're just suggesting that there be some type of barrier privacy fence to block the lighting. Um, but if the, it was the pleasure of the commission, you could refine the the uh, condition 
to state you know exactly the type of fence that has to be constructed or even increase the height a little bit as long as it was within code so okay well speaking from experience a shadow box fence will not sh yield while it'll yield most of the light it'll still allow light to come through and uh whatever we do uh i highly recommend that we make this a a solid solid privacy fence rather than shadow box any other questions from the commission I have one. Um, ben, earlier you mentioned the two apartments that we were worried about like mm -hmm. Well, um, by code, it would have to be the entire boundary. Um, however, as, as I stated earlier, you could beef up the fencing right around the apartments in the condition if you, if you chose to do so. Yeah. Anything else from the commission? None being heard, do I have a motion in regards to this special use permit? I move to approve uh, special use 1901 subject to the following conditions that the applicant constructs a, construct a solid privacy fence on the southern border of the line prior to the certification of occupancy issue. I have a motion to approve with the amended word of solid within the privacy fence do i have a second second motion and a second roll call please song yes montgomery yes sally yes any yes. smith yes driscoll yes Alvin? Yes. <coughs> Motion passes. We'll go to the Board of Directors on February 4th, 2020. Next item on the agenda is significant development permit SD 1911 for 2301 and 2531 East Main. Line of roads. Yes, uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission. Uh, ben Rhodes, Senior Planner. Uh, for your second review item, you're looking at a significant development permit for a new quick service restaurant and car wash to be on the same lot. Uh, both of these structures will total uh, 6356 square feet. Um, the, uh, this is occurring at 2301 and 2531 East Main Street. This is, um, uh, by layman's view, directly south of the Planet Fitness and uh, west of the Bank of the Ozarks building. So here you see the uh, site plan um, showing the proposed structures and parking area. The building on the right will be the restaurant and the one on the left uh, to the west uh, will be the car wash. Um, I'll point out a few uh, notable features. First you'll note that the uh, Northern Drive has a substantial curve to it. This is uh, shown blown up on the right over here. Um, this was a late change due to the uh, inability of the applicant to gain um, access to the bank's uh, drive, uh, which was basically off-site right here. Uh, this uh, relocated drive, or excuse me, the relocated drive now aligns with the Planet Fitness driveway, which is crucial for traffic safety. So the curvature of the drive is needed so that uh, it can pass between the two buildings, uh, connecting both parts of the site. Uh, finally, I'd like to point out that the paving here is uh, somewhat unique uh, in that they're showing um, previous paver stones on part of the parking lot. You'll see this uh, denoted in the uh, brick pattern on the site plan here. Uh, this is needed to decrease uh, water runoff uh, from the drainage purposes. Um, the main drainage ba basin uh, being the fountain feature that's located southwest of this area. And uh, here you see the uh, proposed elevations. Uh, the buildings will be one story with parapet uh, on the top and natural stone or block materials. And uh, here you uh, see the uh, project will look like when it's overlaid on top of an aerial photo. 
Um, there are two access points um, on the south side. Customers wishing to travel eastbound would need to um, exit uh, to the north and then travel um, either to uh, Southampton or continue along Ravenwood Plaza to uh, North Progress Avenue. Uh, sidewalks are shown to connect to the building on the south side of the site. And finally, uh, here you see the site. This is looking to the north. Um, the drive through uh, use uh, does not need a special use, you might be wondering, um, because it's te technically not touching the residential here. Uh, it's separated by Ravenwood uh, Plaza. Uh, staff is recommending approval uh, with no conditions needed as the applicant complies with all applicable codes and staff is available for any of your questions. Thank you. Is anyone here on behalf of the applicant that wishes to speak to the board or commission? Yes, I'm Scott McLean. I'm with MRT Holdings. Can I get your address, please? Yes, 653 West Dixon, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, I'm just here available to answer any questions that you might have, but uh, uh, don't want to take any unnecessary time. Thanks, sir. Anyone here from the public that wishes to address the commission in regards to this project? being none does any of the commissioners have any questions there being none do bup, I bup, oh, sorry. I was just waiting to give everybody else a chance <laughs> I seem to be the only one speaking <laughs> be it on the property here there is there only one exit on the main street from these uh, two uh, there's actually two exits or entrances in the main um, well exit if you're going to the yeah, west. There's a, I'm there, talking about just exit. Uh, I, I I know there's two entrances. They're they're by directional depending on which uh, way someone's wanting to travel. So if they if they did want to exit the site, they could exit and then go back that direction. Yeah. Okay. That's what I say. If they, when they come out of there, they can only turn. That's correct. West. They can only turn west. That's that's what I was saying earlier. If they were wishing to go east, they would come out on Ravenwood Plaza, then come out, turn here, or go straight and go to Progress. Okay, and there's only one exit out the back, which is for both properties or both businesses. Correct. One exit out the back. Yes. Any other questions from the commission? There being none, do I have a motion in regards to this project? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve significant development permit 19-12 without no conditions, without conditions. 19, yep. 19, 19, I'm sorry, 1912? Am I looking at the different one? 1911. 1911. I'm looking at the next one. Sorry. No problem. 1911. I will have a motion to approve SD 1911. Sec I second. I'll second. Motion and a second. Roll call, please. Montgomery? Yes. Sally? Yes. McKinney? Smith? Yes. Driscoll? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Song? Yes. Motion approved. This will also go to the Board of Directors on February 4th of 2020. Next item on the agenda is Significant Development Permit 19-12, 3500 Highway 412 East. Roads. Yes, thank you again, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, the next item for your consideration is another significant development request. Uh, this one is occurring at 3500 Highway 412. It's best described as the uh, vacant lot immediately to the east of the new Popeye's restaurant. Uh, the request is to construct a 6,800 square foot uh, retail tire store. Uh, here is the site plan showing the proposed building. Uh, it is identical uh, orientation to Popeyes, just uh, just west, uh, just to the west of this proposal. Um, parking access will be from the same fashion as Popeyes, with the vehicles coming off of the shared access drive, as you can see shown here. Sidewalks are shown to connect to the building here. 
and drive the drive aisles are slightly uh, wider at this location um, and that's done intentionally to aid for the loading of vehicles for service because the the service bays will be along this side of the building with a east or west orientation uh, here you see the uh, elevations what the proposed building will look like the customer uh, area will be along the front and here with um, vehicles of course in the back and uh, here's the uh, plan area overlay and how it will fit in the surrounding env environment uh, the house located here is uh, presently considered abandoned and is unoccupied Uh, this is the uh, site looking to the south. Uh, the picture was taken slightly before uh, Popeyes has opened. Um, as of course, probably know that's already open for business right now. Uh, staff is recommending approval with also no needed conditions, and we're available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Anyone from um, behalf of the applicant here to address? <clears throat> Nate Bachelor from CEI Engineering, 3108 Southwest Regency Parkway in Bentonville. Thank you, sir. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Appreciate it. Anyone on behalf of the, or from the public that wishes to speak in regards to this project? Anyone on the commission have questions in regards to this project? There being none. Do I have a motion in regards to SD 19-12? Make a motion to approve SD 19-12. Have a motion and a second. <coughs> Roll call when you're ready, sir. Sally? Yes. McKinney? Smith? Yes. Driscoll? Yes. Colvin? Yes. Song? Yes. Montgomery? Yes. Motion passes. We'll go to the Board of Directors on February 4th, 2020. Next item on the agenda is preliminary plat development permit PP 19-07. <coughs> 23006 Lawless Road. Mr. Rhodes. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commission. So uh, transitioning now from SNF making developments to plumbery plats, um, you're looking at a plumbery plat uh, for a continuation of a housing addition. Uh, this is located on the uh, to the east of phase phase one of the Lawless Ranch addition and north side of Lawless Road uh, at the shown address there. Um, the proposal is to uh, plot the second through fifth phases, uh, completing out the subdivision. Uh, the first phase was completed earlier this year and uh, presently has two-family housing. Here you uh, see the proposed uh, site plan. The lots are sized appropriately for two-family housing. Um, as noted in the staff uh, memo, this property is not zoned, nor it can be, it be annexed in the city at this time. Uh, should the property be annexed, uh, the R3 zone will be the best fit for the uh, proposed use. Um, I'd like to point out that the uh, master street plan does call for a future minor arterial street that would be on the north side of the addition here. Uh, this is an extension of Oak Crest Road. Uh, the developer shows uh, connections to this future street. Um, there's no timetable at this time as to when that would be constructed or finished. Because of uh, multiple connections to Lawless Road, um, this is uh, not considered a, quote, no outlet street subdivision. However, it does, uh, does not meet the uh, fire department's remoteness rule. So the developer is aware of this um, and plans to only construct the first 30 dwelling units until a secondary access can be finished um, either to the north or west of the subdivision um, and a condition on this it will be on the final plat permit whenever the final plat is ready to come forward. Uh, and here you see the uh, site. This is looking uh, to the east. Um, Lawless Road is on the right and uh, duplexes in phase one are shown at the bottom of the picture right there. 
uh, Lawless Road was improved in 2004 with the anticipation that the uh, traffic generated from this and other developments in the area would be handled by the road improvement. Uh, the existing farmhouse located there um, is to be retained um, as one of the proposed lots in the subdivision. Uh, in terms of compliance with the future land use map, uh, the addition does fall within the proposed density when factoring the maximum suggested density in the medium housing density range. Again, with the um, property not zoned, the city has no say over the proposed land use, only um, the uh, zoning controls the land use classes. Staff uh, suggested to the developer um, to consider single family housing along the perimeter areas, uh, those budding the uh, open farmland um, to help ease the density transition from rural to urban. And that's just a su suggestion, not a requirement. Staff is recommending approval with no conditions and we are available for any questions. Thank you. Is there anyone on behalf of the applicant that wishes to address the commission? Yes, sir. Ron Holmeyer, Civil Engineering, 701 South Mount Olive Street. A um, couple of points. Uh, yes, this is being proposed as potentially probably two family, but time will tell as to whether that need will continue. But because there is no legitimate in our opinion, place to switch from two family that's there now to single family without having them side by side. We would prefer they be across the street or on a different block. So the first phase for sure is gonna be two family, but then as the market demands, the remainder may go single family. It just depends on, like I said, the market demands. Um, I do, disagree with the presentation on the maximum of 30 units because my understanding from the fire marshal is is that remoteness and no outlet restriction of 30 are not connected so we simply can't develop the lots that are beyond the remoteness measurements and so in reality there are 13 lots that would not be able to be built until the remoteness is addressed. But the rest of the 56, is it, would be. So just wanted to point that out. And I have, There's not a problem with complying with the, the wording, it's just the wording of the presentation. Right. Or complying with the, the code requirement, it's only the wording of the presentation. Correct. Okay, thank you. And Available to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Anyone from the public that wishes to address the commission in regards to this project? Back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Susie Please Gilbert. State your name and address, please. 14657 Don Hill Road. I was here when the first part of the development was developed. It's after that transpired, we had the road, main road that goes across our farm, and I have pictures. We've owned this farm since 1935. My grandparents bought it. Never had this happen. But according to a letter from Mr. Bland, our problem, we did it all wrong. We spent 14, the, when, at, we, when, after one of our big storms last spring, it washed, completely washed out the road that goes, transpires across our farm. We spend the money, hire the people, get expert people to fix it at the cost of $14,000. We have another four inch rain, out it goes again. <laughs> so at that point I got in touch. If you can't see on Ben's picture, do you have any more Ben? Uh, I probably should have talked to him, but there is a retention pond that they assure me is working properly. That's lower. That see those high line wires in Ben's picture. That my father gave to the city at with no compensation to build those wires. He's donated the corner of our property, straightened out the corner that's so dangerous coming down Don Hill Road. 
said he has never done it. He gave them the land to do it. He's done, he's allowed them with no compensation to install a sewer line in our farm for later use. Done everything he can possibly do to help the city and go ahead and provide for progress. Our only request is that you do not allow these one car cracker boxes. They're horrible. We drove up to one of them in my minivan. My minivan won't even fit in the garage and open the door that those that they've already built. I don't know what Mr. Krein's plans are. He has some rather nicer duplexes across the street on across the street on Don Hill, but that's not in the plan, not with 56 of them. We would just like to see it be houses. There's a better, bigger need, in our opinion, for normal houses, for widows and people that, Oliver, that are looking for a, a small house, like what's going up on Heiko. Every one of those is sold. I also, my husband and I, drove over to the new first phase of this the other week, and I bet you there aren't eight of those duplexes. They're leased. They're charging a $1,000 a month rent on these tiny boxes. I don't know. As I said, I feel like I'm already in Bernie Sanders' world here because it's awful, and the flooding and the damage it's doing to our property, it means nothing to the city. As I said, we keep spending money to try and make it nice, keep it nice. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else from the public or the applicant wish to speak? You have three minutes. Please state your name and address, please. Mike Burns, 23014 Lawless Road. So I, I don't know what questions I can ask since this is just a preliminary platting, but I wanted to know about, which I haven't talked to him, but about the water retention or anything like that for this. Um, concerns since they built that previous um, addition in the fire lane road, how much water builds up in. Mine's the house that shares the driveway with crying. And then the uh, my neighbor next to us, we have more water building up in the back of our yards now since they built that fire lane that's there, which looks in the pictures that you had previously is gonna go away. Ben, is that correct? Yes? Okay. So I, I don't know what that's gonna do to the water retention. It wasn't this way before, so that might help that, but I have a concern about that. And then the fencing, as you talked about on the, the uh, one of the earlier things you talked about the fencing in between properties for lights. I have a question about that. Um, and then as many cars were going to use that road, um, that's a shared driveway for me. I have a concern. We already have a problem on lawless with cars going rather fast. I would want to know if there's any way I could ask for maybe a speed table on that road or something to slow down traffic. That's some of my requests or questions. Thank you. Uh, in regards to our earlier fencing discussion, that was primarily between two different uh, zoning types, but this property being out in the county, that's going to be a little bit different to meet with the developer in regards to. Uh, developer, have any comments to any of the list? My name's Jim Crine. Um, I live at 2306 uh, Lawless Road. <clears throat> uh, as far as a couple of things, uh, if you see, I don't know why, I don't, I don't understand how there could be more water in their yard because the way it is, it's draining to the west and then it goes under the street. I mean, it's nuts wet right now. And uh, I would also say to the other people's deal, you know, I'm not an engineer, I don't claim to be one, but I don't think the water's ever gone over the dam at City Lake either. So, I mean, we've experienced some crazy weather in the last little bit as far as that goes. But uh, I would also say, I would think if uh, that was in, uh, I talked to one of the other neighbors, if this was in the city limits, which some of these people could control, 
there's there's never any police on that street and the sheriff with it being so close to the county it's kind of or i mean so close to the city it's somewhat safe they do not patrol that i mean it's a it's a good wide enough street but you don't see sheriffs you don't see police you don't see nothing there um as far as the fencing um i don't see that being a problem i mean i i'd be glad to put a fence there if that was the least i could do i want to i i live there currently i want to be a good neighbor to all these people i know um <clears throat> it's just it's kind of changing their life but um I'm, I'm sorry about that, but I mean, <laughs> when their houses were built, it changed people's lives too, and it's been a good place for them to live as far as that goes. Uh, it's, it is a good area, and I think it'd be a good place. And also, I don't, I don't foresee this, but I don't know. I don't see us building all duplexes in there, but I, don't, I feel like the neighbors, I think when they built the, the duplexes, it was originally single family. I feel like they've been baited and switched. I think that's what a lot of them felt. A lot of the people, I didn't have nothing, you know, I, that wasn't my project, but it, they got approved for single family houses. Then six months later, they, they came in and applied for duplexes. I think that kind of raised the hair on people's necks a little bit too. But uh, <clears throat> we, another thing to this lays, uh, if I build these, they will not be single stall garages. We build, we build a little nicer duplexes in my opinion than these. And uh, we manage them ourselves and uh, we're we're here. We see we know the people that live there. So I'd be glad to answer any more questions. I hope I I think that was everything on your list. So, so. All right. thank you. Anybody else from the public that wishes to address? Please state your name and address. You have three minutes. Chris Horton, two two nine eight six Lawless Road, Salem Springs. I just want to bring to everyone's attention my concerns for this, and I spoke to Mr. Crine earlier today. Um, first of all, he's correct. Uh, the Riggins development, that was approved as single family. So whoever's fault that is, I don't know. Somebody messed that up. And now we have the cracker boxes that she was talking about, which decreases our property value out there. Lawless Road cannot handle um, the traffic that is already there right now. We've had two vehicles that's sitting out in the road that's been wrecked in the last few months. Traffic comes through there at a high rate of speed. No lighting after dark, so it's extremely dangerous. Um, not, and I know Mike mentioned that, Mr. Burns mentioned that about the lighting. Kids can't ride their bikes along the road anymore, and yet we're going to try to put in 56 more of these multifamily living spaces. Um, Mr. Crine is right, and, and it's been mentioned here that this is not city um, zoned area. So when I called and talked to the county uh, myself and spoke with them about my concerns, their words were verbatim, we can send a patrol officer around, but Salem Springs is ultimately responsible for creating the overflow coming from all the development in a small localized area. That was from the county. Crime's another issue, concern. And all, all these landowners that have addressed the same issue, um, as I mentioned, not really anything new. Um, I just feel like nobody's really caring about the logistics of what we're doing um, or what's going on. I'm, I'm a lifetime resident of Salem Springs. I love Salem Springs. I want to see it grow, progress. I do that. But I don't think we're thinking about the logistics of what we're doing. And I sympathize with my neighbor's water concerns but I'm, I am at 22986, which is just, just catty corner from Mr. Crine's property there. And with all due respect, I don't think there's anybody that's dealt with any more flooding issues than I have. And when I say two major flooding issues, um, I'm talking over $20,000 repairs. I've got flooring out of my house right now. The drainage continues to get worse. So again, it's not about progression. I, I'm okay with that. But we got to think about some logistics here as far as what are we creating? That's, that's, that's my big concern here on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to speak in regards to this project? Well, one time. <laughs> One more time. 
please repeat your name and address for the Lizzie Gilbert, fourteen six five seven Don Hill Road, Walnut Grove Farm. Well, I have two questions. This road has been on the map forever in the big master plan on the north side. I believe that's going to include our property there, too, probably, which I don't know how you do that eminent domain. You just take it. How do they acquire the land for that road? My understanding of it at this time, staff can correct me, it's, it's, it's a plan. And as properties develop over time, you just take developers it. have to shift to match that plan. Okay. I'm 73 years old. I've seen the water go over that dam several times to the point of where it was a complete flood from Pete Allen's gate to the north almost a half a mile so that's not unusual at all I mean it's it doesn't happen every year but it does happen and I've had three people one Joe Wilbright who's an expert on the land and has worked on our property in in conjunction with the uh, Nature Conservancy they have never seen our road flood that went across our farm so to have Siloam tell me that that's not our fault that's that's not true it's all this development is taking up the land that's all thank you Ms. Gilbert state your name and address you have three minutes Mike Horton 23063 Lawless Road and even though it may not look like a water issue, that is one of my main concerns. Um, I live just down the uh, back west of this project, which is directly across the road from um, the first project that was put in, and the water has gotten worse. Uh, it doesn't take much rain anymore uh, to make our uh, water meter lids start floating and find them elsewhere. Um, I think if this would proceed, uh, I would really like to see a single family and that perhaps, um, I, I know you mentioned it is different, uh, but if it does proceed that there be uh, a large fence uh, put around that and also an additional retention pond. Because you can see there is a lot of water and whether it may not be possible, uh, after you wake up in the morning after a big rain, you'll find out that it is possible because it's in your yard. So that's a big concern to me, to me. Um, and I'm a little farther west and it's still a concern uh, along with several of these others concerns that's been mentioned. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the commission? Being none, do any of the members have questions? Commission? have any comment on the existing pension proposal I mean in the capacity that it I mean, uh, Justin Bland city engineer um, so uh, as far as that last comment goes there, there is actually going to be uh, an additional detention basin proposed in the southeast corner this this property actually kind of splits and there's a ridge line that kind of goes through here. So some of it goes northwest and some of it goes to the southeast. So there will be an additional um, pond there created to, to address the water coming south from the site. Um, at, you know, at this point in time, it, I know there's some new members on the, on the commission here. Um, we, you know, at, the way that this typically works is that uh, an engineer will turn in a preliminary plan with a, a preliminary drainage report. So it's not like a detailed report at this point in time, but conceptually he's shown the volumes there to address what, what's gonna happen. If this is approved, they'll move forward with actual uh, detailed design, which they'll get turned into us for review. And um, sometimes sometimes these things have to shift out a little bit to make work. So, so right now the preliminary drainage report shows that this will be adequate. Um, you know, we'll see what the actual detail comes in, what it looks like. So there'll, there'll be further analysis from this point on forward is where I'm going with that. But 
Does, does that address your question? Yeah, absolutely. If the, if the final numbers don't show that, uh, we, it, we can definitely make changes between now and moving ahead. Absolutely. Justin, regarding um, gentleman's question, do you have any plan to add lights, traffic lights, street lights? We, we, we don't, and that's, it's, it's, the site is kind of challenging because it's not in the city. So we actually have no oversight over that. Um, city limits is um, maybe 300 feet south of Lawless Road in this area. Okay. So this is kind of that planning area where we have a little bit of authority to, to do uh, oversee developments, but it's ultimately not a city property, so we don't actually regulate the, the long-term maintenance of those places. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else from the commission have a question or comment? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. And I'll just like to take the opportunity just to expand a, a bit just on what Justin just said and this is just for the benefit of the the, the public and and for our our new members um, because this is outside the city limits um, our our review here is very limited and that is by by state law um, what we're confined to looking at is basically you know does the uh, infrastructure, meet our standards as far as do they have proper utilities do the uh, streets meet our standards is the water service sufficient as uh, you know do they have you know sewer or do they have sufficient septic that sort of thing um the the use um is it whether it's going to be single family multifamily, or commercial for that matter um we are by state law not allowed to regulate that and so um yeah, you know, and that and that's just that's just the 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 hand we're dealt. That 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 that's the, you know that that's just the the, the cards, um, you know that we're we're given to play. Um, so um, you know whether you like you like it or not. I mean that that's the that's what we're dealing with here. So we have a limited amount of review uh, available to us. Um, so. Um, we're we're here today. I mean, just like I said, to uh, with a, for a you know, limited amount of review. Um, so I just urge everybody to, to keep that in mind. Um, you know, we we've sometimes um, in in the past and and you know sometimes gotten gotten bogged down on issues that are not not before us. And um, so I just um, you know just just urge everybody to keep in mind what we're what we're here for tonight. Just a word of caution. Thank you. There's no further comment. Do I have a motion in regards to Berlin Mary Platt 1907? I move to approve primary preliminary plat development 19 07. Motion. Do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> motion and a second. Roll call. McKinney? Smith? Yes. Driscoll? Yes. Colvin? Yes. Song? Yes. Montgomery? Yes. Sally? Yes. Motion carries. This matter goes to the Board of Directors on February 4th, 2020. Next item on the agenda is preliminary plat development permit PP 19-08. Yes, uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, before you is another preliminary plat. Uh, this is site uh, is located east of Phase 2 and south of Phase 1 of the Heritage Ranch addition on the south side of Lawless Road at the address shown. Uh, this is just south of the project that you just uh, reviewed just now. Um, the uh, proposal um, for your consideration is the plat, uh, the third phase, and that will be completing out the subdivision. Uh, the second phase was completed last year uh, and uh, presently has single-family housing. Uh, this project is a resubmission of phase three, which was approved in 2016. However, now that is considered expired, uh, and the project changes the lot configuration and street layout from the 2016 plan. So uh, this is the proposed site plan. 
Lots are sized appropriately for a single family housing in the R2 zone. Um, there are two points of access, which allows this to be considered a, or allows us to not be considered a no outlet street subdivision. Uh, the uh, lot sizes are slightly smaller than the earlier phases. However, most of these will be tucked in behind the existing houses, save for two homes on the end of Heritage Ranch Drive. Uh, the detention uh, basin is existing in that southwest corner of the side and is sized correctly for this subdivision. Uh, staff is suggesting a condition that a lot line adjustment be agreed upon by the two homeowners uh, located here. This is needed so that the houses meet their side on corner setbacks, which go in effect when the new street, uh, which is Dusty Lane, is accepted by the city. Uh, rather than allowing these houses to fall out of zoning conformity, uh, staff suggests that the uh, excess land be either on either side of Dusty Lane right away, be deeded to the adjoining lots, giving them the land needed to meet the uh, correct setbacks um, once the street opens up. Uh, the lot line adjustment will be accomplished through the final plat survey, uh, so a separate land survey would not be required for that. Uh, here you see the site. This is looking to the south. Um, Autumn Glen is uh, the next subdivision to the south there, and then uh, Allen Elementary is there just to give you some orientation. Uh, the vacant lots uh, here, that's where the, the new street will come in. That is mentioned, Dusty Lane. Uh, and that connects back to, to Carl Street. So there, like I said, there's going to be two entrances into the subdivision, that part of it. Staff is recommending approval with the stated condition in the staff report, and we are available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Anyone on behalf of the applicant developer wishes to speak to the commission? Yes, Ron Homeyer, Civil Engineering, 701 South Mount Olive. Uh, I really have no additional comments. He's done a good job. Just available for any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Is anyone from the public here that wishes to speak? on this topic. <coughs> My name is Jana Pavlock. I just moved to 2207 North Carl in Salem Springs. And my biggest concern about this new project is the price of these homes that's going in, size and pricing of these homes. And also, even though we've got said uh, retention pond, we do have water issues running behind our house. And just beyond our property line is a big pond that stays there the majority of the time. Um, we've had neighbors that have talked to the builder uh, about it. And... Um, we still are having that issue. But like I said, I, um, that concern and the property that's going to be built as far as quality of those homes, sizing, pricing, because I don't want the property values of my home going down. So, thank you. Quite like uh, the the last project, the uh, drainage features for this uh, are submitted at one level during preliminary plats and has to be acceptable to the city's drainage standards since this is in the city before construction be allowed. Anyone else wish to speak in regards to this? Please state your name and address, sir. And you have uh, Gerald Powell, 2403 Heritage Ranch Drive. My house is, it won't work here. Actually, I think it did. <laughs> yeah, you like yeah. My house is this house right here. So, so I share a, prop, a fence line with this. I didn't fully understand what size are these lots in here in, in relationship to the lots that are around here and with the new houses? Where they match up to the existing development? All this, uh, as I saw, it looked like it's all new lots. This this area was approved 13 years ago for development. And now I see they're trying to redraw this and change the lot sizes and everything. 
but I don't understand the lot sizes exactly or what size houses they're going to put in here. Is that, uh, do we have that information? Ben or Mr. Homer, can you address the, the phasing, the density, size, chain, transition from north to south? The lot size looked significant from that, what I saw, the lot size looked significantly smaller than the current lot size in here, this subdivision. Mr. Rhodes going to try to help us out here a little bit. Okay. Excuse me. So uh, yes, you're correct that this is the um, this is the third and final phase of Heritage Ranch. It was started in around 2004, phase one, then sat basically vacant for in that one phase for many many years, and then they came back with the second phase, which connected this here. Um, now they're going back with the third phase. Um, the lot sizes, as I stated in my report, are slightly smaller. They're um, around 7,000 square foot lots. Some are larger, some are about right at 7,000. Um, and that meets the R2 zoning. And we have to go by zoning. We can't go by what the earlier phases were or what, what might have been promised at one point or time. Uh, the zoning is the police power. It's what controls the land use and the size of the lots and size of the homes. This so this is now in the city, whereas in the past... This is in the county. city limits. Here, I'll show back here. This is in the city limits. Zone R2, it is meeting the minimum R2 standards. Thank you. What is the minimum R2 standards? Uh, it's uh, 7,000 square foot lots at 60 foot lot width. Do you know what the current lot sizes are as far as square foot? Uh, I don't have that on hand. No, I, I don't. What are they? Quarter acre. Quarter acre. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think quite a quarter, but I think it's actually more than a quarter. Well, that, that was what was listed on our, when we bought our home, it was listed as a quarter acre lot. Okay. Does anybody know what size house or what they're going to construct in here? It will transition or it will be per the R2 uh, zoning, which if I remember correctly, is single family dwellings. I, I, I could not speculate what market values would be for such a thing. What, what appears from what I saw put up here, it looks like it's it, inconsistent with the, with the housing around it, that's why. And I don't, you know, I, I don't understand exactly why phase three was approved 13 years ago and now somebody's coming in and re redrawing it looks like actually sir with the uh, with the number of years that it stayed dormant and those permits expire after x amount of time and this was many years that it expired and basically it starts over why are they calling the phase owner. three then Every, all of us out there see the sign and they say that it's phase three so if it's phase three, why isn't it phase three of what's been approved? Otherwise, it's a new subdivision. Some aspects, I could see what you're saying, yes, uh, because it's this is not a phase three plan. from what I saw. It has nothing to do with phase three. It has to do with a new subdivision, new lots, new size houses, new everything. Which is why we're starting the preliminary plat process, because it is a new design. I think you need to go out there with the signs they put up and let people know that this is not phase three. It is a new subdivision with new plots, new sizes of lots, new housing. Because I don't, I think this is kind of a farce that you're telling it all is phase three. You don't have anybody show up here because they don't, they know what phase three is. They know what phase one is. They know what phase two is. They were developed, now it's phase three. There's approval of phase three. We know what those lots were. We know what they look like. We know what the streets were. Actually, were. phase three was not approved, sir. That's it, why it's well, never approved. Well, it was approved, bill. and they're still calling it phase three. Okay, thank you. Mr. Homer. I'm going to do my best, but I'm going by memory. I don't bring my notes with me. Um, yes, the lot sizes are smaller. If you look at phase one, the lots that are front on Lawless Road itself were wider and deeper than the rest of the subdivision, even from the get-go. 
in an attempt to mimic the houses that are just east of there that were already existing. Those lots were wide, one acre, but they were very narrow for one acre and very deep. So that was the purpose there. The next row behind it was then brought down to an average of 8,500 square feet, I think, because again, I didn't bring the old file to remember what that exact number is, but I think that was about the square footage we were shooting for. And these are running on average, you know, the average is running closer to 7,200 than 7,000. The lots are 60 foot wide. <clears throat> the builder is the same builder that built on Carl Street. He is going to build a similar home with a slightly lower price point. Obviously, smaller home is going to have a slightly smaller price point because the price point of the ones on Carl Street are at 300000 and above, and he would just like to get a little, a little bit below that with what he's putting in this time. And in addition to that, the south side of all this backs up to Autumn Glen and that is part of the reason he's wanting to reduce the sizes because of that influence as well. So the size this is the greatest at the north and the closer to the core of the city. Right. As you go from north to south, the lots get smaller and the houses will be smaller in this phase. And yeah, it's the same builder that did phase two, that's why he's calling it phase three. Even but because the permit expired probably 12 or more years ago, it had to be re reauthorized. Thank you. Um, it seemed like there was another question they had, but I don't remember what it was. Drainage on those backyards. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but once we put in the street, it will help that drainage situation tremendously. And then we're also going to be, with this development, building a ditch along those back lines where they say there's water standing now to direct it into that box that's there so that it will quit running into their backyards but actually go into the drainage system. That's what it was. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Ma'am, ma'am, we can't hear you from... That answers my question about property values. Okay, thank you. So that, that's my, like I said, that's my biggest concern is having a smaller, less expensive house go in right behind mine. I so. understand that. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the commission? Being none, do I have a motion in regards to preliminary plat 1908? Make a motion to approve preliminary plat 19-08. Motion to approve 1908. Do I have a second? Second. And a second. <clears throat> Roll call. Smith? Yes. Driscoll? Yes. Alvin? Yes. Song? Yes. Montgomery? Yes. Sally? Yes. McKinney? Motion carries. Matter goes to the Board of Directors on February 4th, 2020. Next item on the agenda is preliminary plat development permit 19-09, 3900 block of Highway 412 East. Yes, uh, thank you again, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, before you use the uh, final preliminary plat uh, for your consideration this evening, um, the site um, is located directly north of the Grandview Estates that some of you might remember. Uh, recently reviewed by the commission and due east of Eastern Hills on the south side of Highway 412 East. Uh, the proposal for your consideration is the plat out 29 um, two-family lots, of which one will be a detention basin yielding um, 56 new dwelling units. I believe there was a Scrivener's error in the staff report. It said 28 lots. There's actually 29 total lots in the in the development. Uh, as the staff report uh, states, the uh, property is not zoned. However, unlike um, the Lawless Ranch edition, um, this one can annex into the city, and this is a suggested condition. Uh, before you here in the slide is the site plan. Uh, the addition is a similar layout to Meadowbrook um, subdivision, if you're familiar with that one. 
uh, with the proposed lots around an O configuration. However, the difference uh, with this addition is that the, there will be a connection on the back side of the uh, O um, configuration here. And that um, actually will tie in to the uh, Grandview addition. So the Grandview had a, a stub out on the north part of that, and this will all interconnect. Um, the lots are sized appropriately for uh, two-family housing uh, upon annexation. Um, the uh, second staff condition um, relates to the uh, number of units permitted on the no outlet street. Uh, this is limited to 30. Um, uh, this is not, um, so it's not really a fire code remoteness issue, but rather just how many lots are allowed on a no outlet street. So when this, uh, when the street in Grandview is built and dedicated to the city, then uh, this, that issue will go away and it will automatically connect at that point. But they can't uh, do more than 30 until that happens. So uh, here is the uh, site. This is looking to the south. Um, the development to the right here, that's Eastern Hills, and then the one to the south uh, up here, Ridgestone, and of course, Grandview Estates. So staff is recommending approval with the two conditions related to the annexation and also the limited uh, development units until platted access is granted on the south side of the addition. And uh, we are available for any questions. Thank you. So Ben, are we assigning the new zoning for, for this property? Uh, not at this time. That That's done solely by the board of directors upon annexation. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Anyone from the owner wishing to speak to the commission in regards to this project? Hey, Ron Homer, Civil Engineering, 701 South Mount Olive, and just here to answer any questions. Anyone from the public wish to comment on this project? Being none. Anyone from the commission wish to question or comment in regards to this project? Being none. Do I have a motion in regards to preliminary plat 19-09? Motion for the conditions and the preliminary plat. Do we have a second? Second. 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 Roll call. Driscoll. Yes. Alvin. Yes. Song. Yes. Montgomery. Yes. Sally. Yes. McKinney. Yes. Smith. Yes. Motion approved. Goes to the board of directors February 4th, 2020. Next item of business is board approval permits. Uh, board approved permits from Mr. Rhodes, and he will immediately go into staff approved permits upon that completion. And that's correct, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Thank you again. So I have a few more items to cover uh, for you for information only. Um, no recommendation is required for the Commission on these, um, but I will take questions um, at the end of my presentation once I roll through all the different permits that we're looking at. So the first one item is a right-of-way closure and lot consolidation combination. This is at the 300 block of Highway 59 North, basically the field that's just to the west of Cobb and north of the old uh, gas station at uh, Highway uh, 59 and 412. Um, there is a, actually a platted subdivision there from 1967 that was never constructed. Um, so the applicant is intent is to reorganize the lots and to close the unneeded right-of-ways um, for commercial use. Um, and staff is, um, staff is aware of no construction plans um, pending or anything for the lots that they're wanting to, to look at. Um, as the slide states, this will go um, before the board as an ordinance on February 4th, uh, 2020. Here's the um, site plan. Uh, uh, North has switched on you, so North is to the right. This is Highway 59 in the bottom and 412 on the left there showing you the uh, sizing of the lots proposed and the, the dotted line is the old right-of-way. And here you can see kind of a better view of the old right-of-way and easements that are proposed for close, closure in that hatch, hatching. Um, here, I'll just kind of show the, this, this whole area here. 
And then uh, here's the drone view, the, uh, basically encompassing this entire area for that project. So moving forward, uh, we have a lot split that was approved uh, by staff uh, last year. This was a split off uh, uh, basically 7,000 square foot lot from a larger track there. So as you see, circled in red. Uh, and then this is the uh, site plan showing uh, lot two uh, there in the bottom. And uh, those of you that are new, uh, staff does approve uh, lot splits now. They do not go to the commission for approval. Um, and then moving forward here, we have another lot split. Uh, this is 27 block of um, uh, Waukesha Road. This is uh, splitting off uh, 5.08 acres uh, from lot one of the Pine Ridge Edition, which is located just south of Trail Ridge, which is another subdivision approved last year. Um, the new lot is lot 1A here at the bottom. That is being split off from that larger piece. Um, this has been approved, but has not yet been filed for record. And then a, finally, we do have a, or actually second to last, uh, we have a lot line adjustment for uh, Jason Duggar, 706 and a half South Heiko Street. Uh, this was to adjust this lot here to um, essentially move the property line to the north to allow for the new um, residents to build a carport on the site. And here you see this is the, the old lot line and then the new lot line sh being shifted north. So it's basically a simple lot line adjustment and consolidation because they did take out this old lot line there um, to make lot two a larger, larger piece. And then uh, finally, we have a, another lot consolidation um, this is at uh, 719 West Alpine Street. And this was to consolidate these six lots uh, into uh, two different lots, as, as shown here on the next slide. We have, uh, so these were all individual lots, um, even though the house was built over three of them. Uh, it was, they were individual lots. So these were consolidated together to have one lot here for the house and then a secondary lot there at the bottom for 7R. And uh, we have not received a building permit for that uh, at this time. Uh, with that, that concludes all our staff uh, approved or board approved permits and we are available for any questions. Thank you. Mr. Rhodes, does commissioners have any questions or comments about any of the staff approved permits? Being none, um, unless there's any other from members of the commission, congratulations, welcome, new guys and returning guys. <laughs> and other than that. Do I get a chance to make a comment? Yes, sir. New guys, don't be too shy. You can speak up and make a motion also. Second that. <laughs> uh, if there's no other comments or concerns, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? We're adjourned. <laughs>